group of two dozen voters, Republicans and Democrats, watched the president's remarks last night, giving feedback to Republican strategist Frank Lund. He's a CBS News political analyst. Frank, good morning. Good morning. So what did you find? We found that Democrats weren't as happy because he wasn't as partisan and passionate as they were expecting, and Republicans weren't as angry because he wasn't as attacking and negative as they were expecting. So it was a much more middle-of-the-road speech. What was the best moment? Uh, best moments when we talked about tax reform, when he spoke about the importance of simplifying the tax code, giving businesses a tax break, and helping to hire new people. Republicans and Democrats dialed him up. But, Charlie, as you would expect, there were more times when Republicans and Democrats split over their reactions. And you said you give them dials so they can figure out what resonates, yes or no. And there was one thing you said that resonated very well with both sides. We'll play that bite first, and then you can comment. It is time to do away with workplace policies that belong in a Mad Men episode. This year, let's all come together, Congress, the White House, businesses from Wall Street to Main Street, to give every woman the opportunity she deserves, because I believe when women succeed, America succeeds. You can really see that. Why did that resonate? You know, there's a message there, which is that instead of the rhetoric of war on women, which becomes very partisan and very prickly. Mm -hmm. Why not approach it that way? Why not be positive rather than negative and talk affirmatively about the rights and the opportunities that should be available to everyone in America? Republicans looked at that and they were applauding. Then and, and and it makes sense. And so that's one of the things that I brought to this table from time to time is that I don't understand why the political people always go for the negative, yeah. always try to find the way to divide when that is a perfect example of language that unifies and makes people feel more positive and that would be much better for the president. Right. Instead of starting with what we agree on, as start with what, you, what we disagree on. And, and be hopeful and be optimistic and be assertive in a positive way rather than a negative way. You have another example of that, another moment that did even better with both parties. Let's take a look at that one. What I believe unites the people of this nation, regardless of race or region or party, young or old, rich or poor, is the simple, profound belief in opportunity for all. The notion that if you work hard and take responsibility, you can get ahead in America. It's not exactly a new message, is it? It's not a new message, but this idea of hard work, and both political parties are trying to capture it, because the one that seems to respect hardworking taxpayers more is the one that gets reelected in 2014. Any time that you talk about opportunity and link it to hard work, you are going to connect with... The, the president's people. trying to get his narrative together here. Yes, because he has to redefine it. Otherwise, it's going to be Democrat versus Republican for the next three years. What about health care? Uh, health care is not successful. I don't know if we have that clip. When he talked about that we're making the changes now, he just broached the subject. It was 40 minutes into the speech. The reaction was negative among both political parties because they simply don't believe this is working. We've sat here now three or four times since the bill became law. And every poll shows it even more ineffective and people even more disappointed. And that was the same reaction that we got from our focus group. All right, Frank Luntz. Frank Luntz, we thank you. You got it. Thanks. Your name hasn't changed. This morning, Rock Band.